Andrew here from the Glazer Tutoring Company, and today I would like to teach you how to balance the following equation, Fe2O3 plus CO produces Fe plus CO2. First thing I like to do is just place in little lines to the left of each particular molecule. That will tell me where the location of my coefficient should go. The next thing is to just keep in mind the general principle that however many atoms or elements you have on the left-hand side, better balance however many atoms and elements you have on the right-hand side. All right, without further ado, I begin with the first element that I see. Now I notice I have iron. Okay, and iron exists only in this one molecule on the left-hand side, and it exists here on the right-hand side. Now, since iron is by itself, I'm actually going to wait to balance that for the end. I'm going to be strategic about it. And the reason I'm going to be strategic about it is because whatever coefficient value I place in here for iron will only affect iron's value. That's unlike any other compound in this problem, right? Once you place a coefficient here, here, or here, you're messing with two elements, okay? So I'm actually gonna save that for the end and you should do the same pretty much for every problem you do, okay? If you don't, it'll work out, but I think it, this, this way uh, will help, it, uh, help you work more efficiently. So let's skip to now oxygen. Now, the next thing about oxygen I realize is that oxygen is in two compounds on the left, all right, and only one compound on the right. I don't like that, so I'm gonna skip it for now. It might turn out to be that that's really where we're gonna start, but I'm gonna skip that, okay, for the time being. So then I see carbon, right? Carbon's only in this compound on the left. Carbon is only in this compound on the right. So I'm like, oh, great, let's balance that. Uh, but it's already balanced, right? One carbon on the left and one carbon on the right. Remember, that's where the subscripts come into play. This almost looks like a very sad face right here, right? Doesn't it kind of? It looks like a sad face. Um, anyway, I'm getting very distracted. So the carbons are balanced. Iron, I'm gonna wait for the end, so maybe I should now balance the oxygens, right? Now here's the thing, when you balance the oxygen, okay, you have three coming from this compound, plus you have one coming from this compound, and somehow that has to equal and balance the two oxygens coming from the compound on the right, okay? Now the way I like to look at this is you need to place now a coefficient, okay? X, call it X, either here, here, or here. Okay, we wanna place that value somewhere. Now, where should we place that value to balance the oxygens? Where do you think? See, the problem is you really don't wanna place the value here because you'll balance the oxygen, but then you're gonna screw up your carbon. But then if you screw up your carbon, then you're gonna to have to go over here and change this value. But then if you, screw, then if you balance the carbon, you're gonna screw up the oxygen. And you're gonna be stuck in this perpetual balancing act, okay? So you don't want to the coefficient there. What I'd like to do is I wanna put the coefficient actually in front of this molecule. And why is that? Well, the reason why that is, is because not only can I balance by placing a coefficient in here, balance the oxygen as you will see, but I'm also going to affect iron's value, but that's okay, because I know then I can place a coefficient here and only mess with the iron's value, okay? So some of the balancing problems, it's a little trickier, right? Some of the, uh, some of the tutorials are just like, hey, you start putting numbers here and there, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's so easy. But uh, when you go to do it in practice, well, it's like up the creek without the paddle. So what I'm going to do, since I know I want to place my coefficient here, I'm going to, and remember, this coefficient multiplied by that subscript will give me the total amount of oxygen, okay? So I'm going to take this X, and I'm going to place it next to the 3 because I want to place my coefficient here, and whatever it is, it's gonna be multiplied by three, all right? So now take a look at what you have. You have a little math equation. All you have to do is now solve this, okay? Make it nice and neat. Let's move things a little closer together, okay? Subtract one on both sides. You're solving for x, so this is three x is gonna be equal to one, and divide three on both sides. X is gonna be equal to one third. Now, I know you're like, oh no, fractions kill me right? But it'll make it easy in this problem, okay? I promise, I promise. So the oxygens are now going to be balanced because one-third times three is one. So you have one oxygen here. You have one oxygen coming from here. So you have two in total now on the left-hand side. And guess what? You have two in total on the right, okay? So that does actually balance. All right. Now, the only thing left, and the carbon's still balanced, the only thing left to balance is the iron, okay? Now, Let's take a look. How many irons do you have here on the left-hand side? Now, I know this is gonna sound a little weird, but you have two irons in this compound, but yet you're multiplying it by one-third. 
So technically speaking, you have two-thirds iron, okay? Two-thirds. How you have to think about it is take this coefficient, 1 over 3, and just simply multiply it by the subscript of 2, okay? That has to now equal the amount of iron you have here on the left, which is 1. Now, again, the question is, and I'm going to change that from an X, you know, it looks like an X to a little dot, okay, for multiplication. The question is now, where do you want to place your coefficient? Do you want to place it here? Or do you want to place it here? You definitely want to place it here because it's only going to mess with the iron's value, okay? So now you place your X right next to that value of 1 and just solve this simple math equation, right? This is going to be 2 thirds is equal to X, okay? Now, that's it. That's your X value. That's this value. So go back into your equation and plug it in two thirds. And the equation is actually balanced now. It's perfectly balanced. You can check everything. All right. Now the only issue is we're not done. Okay. Because you can't technically have a third of a molecule. What is that? That's like having a third of a person. It's not a person anymore. It's something else. So what I need to do now is I need to look at my denominators to help me balance this equation fully. Since both denominators are three, I'm going to now multiply each coefficient value by that denominator value of three. So why I'm gonna place little ones here for placeholders. Now, why am I gonna do that? Well, the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I know I need whole number coefficients. One third times three is going to be one. Right, the threes cancel, that's a whole number. Then you might say, well, okay, Andrew, couldn't, could you use six? Sure you could, but the problem here is that this will work out to be two. This is not the lowest value you can come up with. What's gonna happen is you won't have the coefficients in the lowest ratios now if you start multiplying everything by six, okay? So that's why I'm gonna choose the denominator value because when you multiply a fraction by its denominator value, it is always equal to one. So you're going to multiply this fraction by 3. We already said that that was going to be equal to 1. You're going to multiply now this value over here by 3. And that's some easy math, right? 1 times 3 is just 3. Then you're going to take 2 thirds and multiply it by 3. But remember, the denominators would just the denominator of 3 cancels that value, right? So it would just be 2. Same exact logic over here, right? I mean, just put a 2 in here now, so it would be 2, okay? And then one times uh, three is simply going to be three. And that's your balance equation now, okay? This method, it seems harder at the beginning, but remember, not so, sometimes when something is like so, so simplistic and easy, it's, it, it, it's going to hinder you later on, okay? If you understand this particular method, it's much more powerful, okay? Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. And that's what I wanna, I wanna teach you methods that you can use on your tests, where no matter what they give you, you can solve it, okay? That's what I try to do. So hopefully, hopefully it helps. And I do hope you do really well on your tests. Check out our channel, by the way. We've got thousands of videos out there just for you, solved for chemistry, physics, mathematics. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff coming, all right? Stay tuned, I look forward to helping you with more. Be well.